Namaste. Morning. The Om Mantra is the most accessible of all. It's the source of all the other mantras. The sound the mantras produce are all inspired by the sound of the Om. And you can initiate it yourself. Because the other mantras, we need to go through yeah, an initiation from a teacher. Yeah, but the Om, you can practice it right away. All right, so let me just explain why. All right. Samadhi, or the deep absorption, yeah, comprise many stages. Right? But I could group them into like two main uh, phases. The first is the energetic manifestation. Yeah. It's the detachment. Yeah. It's the separation of our subtle entity from the physical. And this is what we call the reflected consciousness. Right. And this uh, characterized by electricity, as the Kundalini energy flows through our system, and then visions, like we go through a dream-like state, but we know we're not dreaming because we're so aware of our situation and that we are meditating. Yeah. Third, yeah, spinning, levitating, rising out of body experiences, traveling, as you interact with other energetic entities too, and sounds. Yeah. But the sounds we experience during the energetic samadhi normally they're quite loud, fluctuating, yeah, yeah and ringing. Yeah, very um, energy or very, I say, energetic, like electricity, the sound of a machine, something like that. Right. So this four yeah, comprise the energetic samadhi. Right. But this is not yet yeah, the union. Right. So the first stage is you witnessing your reflected consciousness. And where does this reflection come from? So something has to yeah, give light to that reflection. Because the reflected consciousness, the energetic samadhi, yeah, you're still attached to your senses. Yeah. You're able to control, depending on the openness and the strength of your energetic anatomy, you're able to control yeah, whatever happens there as you meditate. Yes. Yeah, so there is a process behind this. And this is good. Why? Because through the energetic samadhi, we will be able to understand the process we go through as we enter and go out of our meditation. So we keep our practice safe. Because the energetic anatomy, the bandhas and the nadis, they become like shock absorber. Therefore, we can keep our practice safe because as we meditate, yeah, the energetic, the euphoric experience is a byproduct of electricity, really stimulating the dormant centers of the brain. All right. But it's not yet the ultimate union. All right. With grace of a source, with grace of God, and of course, a hard work, a willpower and determination, something organic will open up inside. A door opens up. Especially here, yeah, specifically here, all right, the heart. All right. So as you witness yeah, the mental energy, the reflected energy, yeah, consciousness, yeah, the thing separate from you, spontaneously, involuntarily, the heart opens up. And this reflected consciousness will be drawn quickly back inside the void, where it comes from in the first place. So this is the one giving light to your mental energy, so you can experience and witness yeah, your subtle entity. Okay. But inside the heart, there's nothing there. Because the energetic samadhi could be quite active, right? But the pure consciousness, the union itself. Yeah, first, you detach and you come back. Union. Yeah. It's characterized only by two entities. Void and sound. So inside the heart, yeah, as you go back, it's pitch black. 
but never-ending pitch back, but so clear. And you will see a streak, yeah, thin line of white uh, light hovering the horizon. That's actually your awareness, your remaining awareness, because without that light, you're going to really plunge into the abyss. And that's the realm, yeah, past life. All right, so you're like clinging to that tiny bit of awareness, the white light hovering. So when the pressure gets heavy, you can come back anytime without inflicting pain. All right. The void. It's nothing. It's passive. So that's pure consciousness. That's your absolute form. Yeah, your unaltered form. Yeah. We all come from this unaltered, passive, dormant, non-reacting, incapable of producing and creating. It's lonely. So for us to manifest yeah, as an energetic physical entity, something has to give yeah, power to that passive consciousness. Yeah. That passive consciousness is the state of sattva. Yeah. It could be a mental state as well, but energetically I'm explaining this to you in actual energetic terms as I've experienced them during samadhi. So nothing blank, void. Yeah. Without this extra power yeah, triggering that passive void, we're not here. Yeah. Creation will not exist. All right. What is this element which gives life and character to our unaltered, steady, passive form, sound. Because after you've experienced the void, the brain opens up. Literally, like you can see what's inside the brain. And the sound emerges. the never-ending OM. It does exist. Yeah. It exists within you and in everyone. That is the source of creation. Yeah. So the sound yeah, is the manifestation of our pure consciousness, so it can assume a character. It can create. So the sound, the OM, yeah, the first sound, the source sound, is God himself as a sound, as a vibration, as a frequency, so he can yeah, create. And the word becomes flesh. So when we chant the Om, and we allow the vibration of the vocal cords yeah, to produce that humming frequency, yeah, we stimulate the centers in the brain which are normally dormant. Yes, we use them, but not as active as the other ones controlling the autonomic functions. Yeah. There are centers there which are uh, not used yeah, in an um, active state. Yeah. And then once yeah, these dormant centers awaken, and then not only sound, also pranayamas and the other energetic observances, they, they awaken those centers too. Yeah. We amplify the production of the theta, alpha, and even the delta brainwaves. So these brainwaves promote deep restoration, sleep, rejuvenation, revitalization of our cells, memory, processing of information, mental clarity, and joy and peace. Yeah, because this is coming. So, yeah. One technique you know, which can allow you to harness the potential of your brain is chanting. Of course, the breath is involved too. Uh, so every time we chant the Om, yeah, we do that part. Yeah. We try, yeah, and the centers there open up. So when you say it, say it quietly but mindfully. You don't want to be shouting it. Yeah. If you've done some chanting from your teacher, your teacher would definitely have to say it louder so you can hear. But when you practice it yourself, 
do it, do it intently and quietly. So it starts with the breath in. Send the breath up to the brain. Yeah. The sensation. Lovely, isn't it? An instantaneous, immediate, calming reaction. So every time you're faced with extreme emotions, yeah, especially the heavy ones, sadness, anger, mental stress, loneliness, yeah, chant it, back off. Close your eyes. You are given this free will to control our emotions, our body, our words. Yeah. So before we hurt you know, people around us with this extreme reaction to our environment, close your eyes, look away, breathe. You might hum it or you might mentally say it. And I tell you, even just one of that technique, yeah, the moment you open your eyes again, it's still the same situation, but your outlook will definitely change for the better. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Namaste. Bye.